All right. Hello. I've got something I want to cover with you quickly. We'll try and keep it short. It's pretty sizable subject, but we'll try and keep it short. Die. Word forming element from the Latin origin meaning apart or asunder. The form of dis. It's the first syllable in the word dielectric. What does that mean? There is a well understood, getting better understood all the time, relationship between electricity and magnetism. If this were not so, nothing that we use today would work from the generator or alternator under your car hood to your refrigerator. Electricity in motion creates magnetism. We've always, and you can use magnetism to create electricity as well. You can reverse the process. At this level of existence, in the beginning was dielectricity. Now what is that? apart, asunder, it's a static electricity. It's a buildup of an electrical charge that's not going anywhere. You can store it chemically in a battery under your car hood. You can store it in a couple of double A's in your remote control. Or you can store it electrostatically in a capacitor. Um, the thing about capacitors is they reach capacity and they have to discharge. Um, electricity has to be conducted somewhere. It doesn't flow from high concentration to low concentration. In following the second law of thermodynamics, saying energy moves until it reaches equilibrium, right? Um, it has to be conducted. It has to be drawn forth. Whether that static charge is, you know, you shuffle your feet across the carpet, and close the circuit, touch something metal, get a shock. That electricity was conducted. Once it ceases to be static electricity, once that electricity goes into motion, It ceases to be dielectricity and becomes a hybrid of electromagnetism. This hybrid of electromagnetism. Think of it this way. The dielectric is static. Be still and know that I am God. Once it goes into motion, and ceases to be still, it becomes this hybrid apart, asunder, and magnetism is created by the electric flow. The electric flow is the sun, S-O-N, and the magnetism is the mother, the magnetism, the magnitude, the matter, good old divine mom. This is the coaxial nature of light. Amplitude, energy flow, gamma rays. This knowledge of electromagnetism, of the transverse nature of these waves, these energy waves, whether they're radio waves or light waves in the ether, has been known for a very, very long time by a very, very small number of people. You following me? Um, 
Now, why is mom, how can the son come before mom? How can mom be the daughter of the S-O-N? See, this is how Eve came from Adam's rib. Rather than the other way around, as common sense would dictate. This is Theory Apophysis, Ken Wheeler's channel. What you're looking at here is a ferro cell. He used an old chemical called mouse milk, and he's laid down a couple of drops in between two plates of glass. He's used two drops of his own blood and one magnet underneath here. And then he's run, put a light ring around it so you can see it. And what you're looking at essentially is the blood, his two drops of blood, the magnetism. You can see the magnetic force lines here. Now tell me, what does that look like? Since the life is in the blood, what does that look like to you? What does that look like to you? Inanna or Ishtar or you could call her many names. She goes by many, many, many names. Wings. There's two of them. There are two of them. You look at those mummies with those two onks in their hands. Hands folded across their chest. There is the collective human subconscious. Deborah the bee, the beehive, always wearing that pointed beehive hat. You might have seen the Pope wear one. And then the individual. But I mean, this owl, this magnetism, this mother, this manifest reality around us, because there are no particles. They are magnetic fields. Understand this. All this quantum crap is a last-ditch desperate attempt to make you believe that there is a physical reality around us. There is not. There is not. Our senses lie. And our toys are good enough now to where even we, the great unwashed, even we, the deplorables, are figuring this out. This Wheeler, this man, Jesus, he is smart. What he said about uh, Charles Proteus Steinmetz, one of the greatest electromagnetism experts and minds that ever lived, what he said about Steinmetz, I say about this Mr. Wheeler, I don't care how smart you, the listener, are. He's smarter. And you should always learn from people that are smarter than you are. He uploaded this in May this year, or last year now. You look this up. I'm not going to bother with links. Make the uh, damned algorithms work for a living. But they've known about this for a long time. And this is a beehive. It always ends up with the black hat and the modern witches, you know, the caricatures. The Owl of Athena. She sprang forth from Zeus's head, remember? He had a splitting headache, so they took an axe to his head. Out she pops. What other symbols? What kind of symbolism are we dealing with here? The wise owl? Yes. The magnetic fields? Yes. I couldn't figure out for the longest time why feeling was such an important part of Goddard's thing for manifesting reality. Well, the right brain, the hemisphere, the, the feminine, the emotional, the emotive, the 
holistic side, I suppose you got to bring them both into play. The imaginative and the cognitive and the intent side is on the left. That's the masculine side. On the right, voila. He's often depicted carrying an aegis. I'm not even sure how to pronounce that. Goat skin shield. Goat. Hello. With the head of Medusa, the seven-headed snake. You might know her out of the Bible as Leviathan. Whom Perseus. Perseus means destroyer. Same as Apollyon. Making a gift of her head to Athena. Zeus often loaned this shield to his daughter. It was forged by the one-eyed Cyclops in Hephaestus's forge. Vulcan's forge in the heat. And that's coming too. She fought alongside many Greek uh, heroes in mythology, exemplified tactical strategy and war in the name of justice, in contrast to her brother Ares or Mars, the god of generation. One of the things that big letter G stands for, who represented unbridled violence and bloodlust. In some depictions, including the uh, Parthenos, she carries or wears arms and armor, a lance, a shield, and a helmet. Worshipped in Sparta. The olive tree. <clears throat> she whipped Poseidon, who was Neptune. I know they're different in the astrology, but um, both of them representing um, the waters. He struck his trident on the rock and produced a salt spring. She, however, produced a beautiful and bounteous olive tree. And Athens was born. In addition to the symbols described above, variety, tall jars, two handles, narrow neck, that might be the uh, Masonic loving cup, uh, decorated with roosters. Roosters. The cock will crow three times. A cloak trimmed with serpents she uses as a protective cover. The serpent is knowledge. A staff or spear with snake around which a snake winds. There's there's Hermes, Caduceus, or Aeschylus. The dove and the eagle. <clears throat> the rooster, the dove, the eagle, and the serpent. The eagle and the serpent with Scorpio, fixed water. It was also the tribe of Dan. The dove talked about last video. The rooster, that's alchemical. That is, um, well, we'll call it the blue kachina for lack of a better phrase. When the, uh, when the uh, veil tears. And we get a good hard look at things the way they really are. Now, these clowns have known for quite a while. This is Bohemian Grove. With their cremation of care ceremony. Yeah? Why do they pay lip service to this goddess? But they're busy raping is what they're doing. They're not worshipping her. They're raping her. Because why do they do these dark rituals and this dark magic and all this crap? Because it works. This moon magic and the ritual, ritual, ritual. The left eye stuff. Did I show you that? Probably not. See, these clowns. The left eye to the right side of the brain, right eye to the left side of the brain. And here we go. Shiners, 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 shiners. I think he got beat up because he didn't come through uh, with all that land he was supposed to come through for at the Bundy Ranch. Um, but yeah, you know, why do they do this? Well, because it works. 
They're all rich. They're all famous. See, Goddard, you you imagine what you want. You feel it. You, you really tightly focus your imagination. You feel it. The, the satisfaction, the relief of getting it. But see, Goddard, I don't know what kind of a ratio he used, but you have to. He said do it with the Christ's words at the top of your mind because, you know, he was a Christian mystic. And he said that it was about uh, do unto others as you would have done unto you. You don't use it in a, in a, in a, in an ugly, dark, nasty, selfish fashion. And he, hell, he died in Beverly Hills. He did fine. See, he came for money, but he did fine in the end. See, and they've known. They all fucking know. There's your one dollar bill for you. This is not news. I'm not uncovering anything new here. But, see, it's a toroidal magnetic field. And in the center of the toroid, in the center, you know, there's your owl. In the center of the torus, right here. And see, they inverted everything. Here's Earth's north pole, except it's the south pole of the magnet. See? They turned everything around, inverted every damn thing. And right here, in the center of this toroidal field, because that's what it is, it's, it, it, in three dimensions, it's a big donut. See? It's a big donut in three dimensions going all the way around. And in the center of that donut, in the center of it, that's the dielectric inertial plane. See, that's where everything comes from. That's where nothing becomes something. And the shape of that dielectric inertial plane is a hyperboloid, which is just a fancy way of saying an hourglass. See, it's an hourglass. It's time. And from that dielectric inertial plane, the electricity flows, magnetism is created, the mother is born from Adam's rib. And this has been known for a very long time. This has been known for a very long time. We've never understood what the hell they were talking about. Well, now these were rotating under the stars, or the stars are rotating on top of us. And the tones of creation are coming into play. The stone, these builders, Paul and these clowns, and we'll go over Paul too. We'll go over why he was a prisoner for Christ. But it's important to remember, though, that in the end they were both, whether they followed Paul or Apollos or, or Cephas or whoever the hell they followed, they were still talking Christ. When Christ was addressed as good rabbi, what must I do to earn the kingdom? His first words out of his mouth were, why do you call me good? There is none good save the Father. Because there is only one God. There is only one. And as long as people are pointing outside of themselves and saying a father out there and an adversary out there, never mind that even in the Bible, Satan reported to God. Never mind that. But as long as you can point at an outside influence and an outside God, you cannot, you're not looking in. This is why you've got 500 channels. This is why you've got instant food. This is why you've got drive through Everything. Instant gratification, entertainment, infotainment. Just, it never ends. Look outside, look outside, go outside. Need a, need a, need a description, need a, a word, go to a dictionary, go to a book, go to an authority outside of yourself. For God's sakes, don't go meditating. God forbid, you know. Anyway. That is what I wanted to cover with you today. Let's try and uh, um, 
Let's try and be excellent to each other. All right, Bill and Ted. And uh, I'll try and figure out how exactly to do this then. I have it a lot. There we go. Stay out of mischief. We'll talk again. Bye.